Uh, yesterday what we did was we covered all the way up to large numbers with multi multiplication and we talked about some of the properties and I told you you kind of need to memorize the single digit by single digit like the six times seven and you, you guys all say let's try that again six times seven and you say forty. hopefully 42 yeah you need to have those down I will give you a multiplication table if you'd like it uh, but you need to have those memorized otherwise you're gonna spend too much time doing that now today, we do have a method to multiply large numbers. It looks real similar to adding large numbers together, but let's cover this and we'll move on to division after it. So multiplying large numbers. By the way, do you remember what this means? Do this first. Five. It does. The parentheses do mean do this first. If there's an operation inside of that, if there's no operation inside of that, whatever number is outside means that you are great. Good. So we're multiplying. This really just means 29 times six. So let's see if we can do 29 times six. Does anyone know 29 times six off the top of their head? No. I don't either. If I thought about, it, I think it's. 174, but it's, it's really hard to do that on top of your head. Why? Because that's not in our multiplication table. We don't memorize that, but we do have a method on how to do problems like this. And typically what we'll do is we'll line them up vertically, real similar to how we lined up addition. Only this time instead of adding, we are multiplying. Do you remember the process, the algorithm, that means the process, for multiplying these large numbers? What do you do first? Okay, so what two numbers specifically am I going to multiply? Nine, okay, everybody, what is 9 times 6? And just like with addition, when we have the 54, we only have four ones. What do we do with the other five? Area over. Okay, now what? 6 times 2 uh -huh. plus, 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 five. Five. plus 5. Perfect. So we're going to get the 6 times 2 is? 12. Plus 5. Seven. Anything else? That's it. We're good. So we get 174. So that's one way that we can multiply these large numbers. Line them up vertically. Multiply each digit on the bottom by each digit on the top. <clears throat> we do need to remember place value holders when necessary. Here they weren't necessary, but we might see them sometimes where they are. Let's do a couple more examples here. How about 307? Remember that that dot also means multiplication. 307 times 81. Again, we'll line it up vertically. Really, we're, it's going to line up just coincidentally by place value. In multiplication, we take care of place values. You can see this with our decimals in a different method. So we're lining up vertically just along the right-hand side. Like on the Word document, how it's right justified, that's really how we're lining these up. So 307, 81, we're multiplying. Okay, walk me through it. You've all seen this before. Let's just get this in our heads again. What's the first thing I'm going to do? Seven and one. Seven. And what are we going to get? Seven. Seven. Okay, great. What's the next thing I'm multiplying? Zero. zero. And how much zero. do I get? Zero. zero. Good. That was one of our zero properties for multiplication. Next thing? Three. Three. Perfect. Am I done? No. 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 <laughs> what else? Got to put it through. Good. You can put whatever you want. As long as you have a place value holder, underneath the 7, because we're going to do the same process again, except not with a 1, but with this 8. Because this 8 is really an 80, we're just kind of ignoring that 1. It really is an 80. This is 80 and a single 1. We need a place value holder, because technically what you're doing is you're multiplying by 80, and you're just adding the 0 at the very end. That's multiplying by 10 very easily. So that's really what we're doing. The place value holder just lets us do that. You can use a zero. I honestly prefer an X. That way, I don't forget to have a place value holder. So I'll put a little X down there. You can put a smiley face if you want. I don't care what you put. As long as you have a place value holder to mark that now we're working in the tens digit. So we move on. What are we going to get next? Um, 57. I mean, 56. 56. That's right. So put our six here. Perfect. And then what do I get? Five. Zero plus five. five. Good. So we still add the five, even though we got the zero, we got the five down. And lastly, everybody, what are we doing? Twenty-four. Hey, what do we do now? Uh, mm -hmm. Since these are already lined up for us, 
we can add this digit by digit because really we're just doing multiplication separately and adding the products together at the end. We'll get the 7, 6, 8, 4, 2, making this 24,867. How many people are okay with this large number of multiplications? I want you to try just one on your own, work all the way through, see that we can all get the right answer. These are the ones that I am going to give you these on a test, and you can't use a calculator with it. So I need to make sure you can do it, but man, this is a real easy way to get five points on your test. Just make sure you, you don't go so fast, because if you think you know it, you're like, I don't know this, it's just below me. If you go so fast, that's when you make those mistakes. So take a little bit of time, make sure you understand the concept here, and get the problem right. There you go. Recall that that actually means multiplication as well, those two parentheses next to each other. Is there any more homework that needs to be turned in? Because I need that at the beginning of class. Okay, let's see what happens with this, this thing. So, of course, hopefully you set this up vertically. Does it matter which one is on the top? No. no. Not really. We typically put the larger number on top for some reason. It looks better. But we're just going to multiply digit by digit until every digit on the bottom is multiplied by every digit on the top. We're going to use those place value holders like we need them. So the six times the two, how much do we get there? Twelve. And we'll carry that. Four times two, or two times two, I'll oh, we'll give it to you. Five. Five. Yeah. And then other one? Fourteen. Next, we're going to put a place value holder. Just one of them because we're moving to the ten spot. I'm also going to erase that because I don't want to count it twice. That wouldn't be a good thing. So the four times the six, how much do we get there? Twenty-four. We'll carry that two. Then what are we going to have? Ten. Ten. Good. We have the eight. We add that two, we get ten. After that, what now? Perfect. Hey, what happens after that? Two X's. Yeah, we, we have to do it for every digit we move over, we have to do another place value holder. So now that we're on the hundred spot, we need to make it look like hundreds. We put two zeros there, two X's. So we're going to do the one times six is six, two. one times two is two, seven. Finally, we'll add them all up. We get a two in the ones, a nine in the tens. We're going to have to carry over one of those hundreds. We'll have, well, let's see here. This should make, how much? 13. 13 and? 10. Perfect. Put a comma in there where we need it. Yes. Um, you said erase, like, whenever you carry over. Do you want us like, to do that in the homework, too? That would, like, That's up like, to you. Work. It's, just a, it's just a tool for you. I like to erase it. That way I don't make a mistake and actually accidentally add something uh, that I shouldn't have. So typically, I would do that on my homework. Like I would just, just erase it, take the time. Uh, it just saves me the trouble of kind of getting confused there. It's just something I'm showing you. If you do it or not, that's, that's really up to you. Okay. How many people got 103,092? Awesome, very good job. We're going to move on from this large number multiplication because this is, this is really it. I mean, we can make problems longer, but the same process holds. So we'll move on into one other aspect of geometry. Uh, that we, we covered perimeter last time. Do you remember the perimeter that we covered? Perimeter was the distance around our figure, around a polygon, which just meant a shape that has uh, straight sides. We're now going to talk about area. <coughs> C 
someone out there, why don't you give me like a, a typical person's definition of area? The space inside of something. That's a great definition. Did you guys hear him back there? No. Say it again, because that was good. The space inside of something. Yeah, that, that's what area is. Square um, footage of a house. Square footage is a way to represent the area. We could say square inches or square miles. Wyoming has a whole bunch of square miles in it. Uh, acres is another way to represent um, this this idea. Yeah. I've always known it as like in the floor, the squares in the floor. Yeah. To show how much mm -hmm. the room is on each side, the side. Right, and these these squares. If you look down right now, that's about one foot by one foot. I think those are those are foot squares. If you look down at those squares on the floor, they're each covering an amount of surface of the floor. Do you see what I'm talking about? That amount of surface is the definition of area, space or surface of some object. So when we define area, we say that area is really the amount of surface of a region. Surface or space. That's a good one, too. I like that. One important thing about area, have you ever heard of, I know you guys have heard of this, the square footage of a house. You ever heard of the square footage of the house? You probably know how much square footage your house has or someone else's house has. Uh, I don't have very much square footage, unfortunately, but that's okay. Maybe you have a large house, you have a lot of square footage, or small house, you have not a lot of square footage. Let's say you were going to re-carpet your house or your room or something. Are you going to walk into Home Depot and go, hey, I need, uh, I need 200 inches of carpet, or I need 10 feet of carpet. Does that make a whole lot of sense? Or 200 feet of carpet? Think about yards. How, do, how, what, what about that? Uh, do you need 200 yards of carpet? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, because when we're talking about area, we're not just linear. Linear means in a straight line. We're not just one dimensional anymore. We're two dimensional. And to represent an area, you can't say just inches or feet or yards or miles anymore. If you're talking about area, we use what are called square units. You ever heard of square units before? I know you have because you've heard of square feet. So you'd go into Home Depot and you'd say, yeah, I don't need, I, you're not going to say I need 200 feet of carpet. You'll say, I need like 200 square feet of carpet. Or I need 200 square yards of carpet. Something like that. That, that would represent to them how much space you need to cover. Are you guys with me on this idea? So make sure when we're doing this area, we're not just putting feet, we're going to put square units. Whatever the units are, inches, miles, feet, yards. Now, let's see if we can figure out how to find the area of some certain fig figures. What happens if your room is, well, rectangular in shape? Let's make sure, make sure that's a rectangle. What would happen if your room is, let's say, 15 feet by 12 feet? Your room is 15 feet by 12 feet. First question I have for you is this. Don't answer before you, you think about it. Can you find the perimeter for this room? Yes. 